Shalom. Call Laimla Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai. By Hashem Rakakadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson being made into a new fashion. So I want to go here. Let's look at that word fashion real quick. Let's just do a quick search. Fashioned. <coughs> Excuse me. Fashioned. Fashion. Fashion. Made into a particular or required form. So being reformed or remade. Sculpt or sculpted. Sculpt. Carving, casting, or shaping techniques. And this brings me to where I want to go tonight and what this word does because we're being made into new creatures being fashioned into the image of the Most High. Let's go here first. Let's go to 1 Peter 1. No, I don't want to go here. Let's go to 1 Peter 1 and 15. 1 Peter 1. And 15. <clears throat> I'm going to go to verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yehoshai Hamashiach. So being remade or reformed starts in our mind. And this is why this word is what is strengthening us and changing our way of thinking. So our entire mindset is being re-sculpted. Let's go to verse 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. So in our ignorance... We're impulsive. We're not patient. Very easily angered, which makes us like beast. So when we get remade or resculpted, we are slow to anger, patient, meek, humble. <clears throat> yep, that's the one I like. Proverbs 16. Let's go to verse. 32, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. So ruling over our spirit, these are characteristics of leaders, not being easily swayed or mentally manipulated, not being moved by emotions. And this is why it's critical to have men of the Lord as fathers, as the head of the households that are grounded in this truth, stable, unmovable, and not easily manipulated by feelings or emotions. <clears throat> so we're being fashioned like unto him. The most high, which is what? Let's go to Numbers, Numbers 14 and 18. <coughs> the book of Numbers, chapter 14. Let's go to verse 18. The Lord is long-suffering 
and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Now, when you read this scripture at face value, it comes off as a little confusing. First of all, the Most High is merciful. And then it goes on to say, not clearing the guilty, but forgiving iniquity. So we're reading about a perfect balance. And this is what we are striving to be. <clears throat> balanced. Not giving evil a free pass. But at the same time, working with brothers and sisters in the truth that are doing the best they can to be changed, to be fashioned in the image of the Heavenly Father or His Word. The spirit of holiness is what we're striving for, to be made holy. <clears throat> and we'll go into that. Let's read it again. So this is a perfect balance. The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. I can easily do three lessons off this one scripture alone. Reincarnation is in here. So every third and fourth generation, we come back. But the key takeaway here is the Most High is balanced. He's merciful and he is equitable. So he executes righteous judgment where it's due. This keeps the balance between mankind and nature. Let's go here. I'm going to go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So the Most High says, Be ye holy, for I am holy, being fashioned like the Heavenly Father, clean, balanced, fair, impartial, merciful, but not acquitting the wicked or the guilty. So we'll, we'll go there. Let's go in here first. See? Leviticus 20, right here. The book of Leviticus chapter 20, verse 7. <clears throat> Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord, your God. <clears throat> Let's go in this word, sanctify. Sanctify. Comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H, 6942. Kadash. Kadash. Second entry, Kadesh, Kadesh. Set apart, Kadesh. Set apart. So the Lord is severing out an elect, a remnant, that are being reformed in our minds. And this is what separates the elect from the other majority of the Israelites and from the rest of the world, <clears throat> which takes us here to be holy, for I am holy. Let's go to Proverbs 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. <clears throat> I want to go back here. So the instruction is from the Almighty. So his word fashions us to be made into the holy or to be cleansed as new beings, new creatures in the word. 
Let's go here. Let's go back. We're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 2. So a part of being made holy is the trial and testing of our faith, which proves our patience. <clears throat> so this is what I was getting at earlier. The most highest long suffering that we read in Numbers 14 and 18. So we're being proven on the battleground, which is this, this world. So everything is created to mold, fashion, test the Lord's elect, his anointed ones. Why? Because he's making reflections of the holy, of himself. Let's go to 1 Peter 2. Yep, 1 Peter 2. Let's go to verse 19. Yep, let's go to 18. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the fraud. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience towards God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. Did we not read the Lord is long suffering? Yes, we did. So we are obtaining the characteristics and traits of the heavenly that we cannot see, but is manifest in the spirit that's on us or the fruits of our actions and behaviors on this earth. So we're being guided by the instruction of the word. Let's go to verse 20. For what glory is it when ye be buffeted for your faults? Ye shall take it patiently. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently. This is acceptable with the Most High. So Yahweh Shai left us an example. He was spat on, lied against, lied about. <laughs> he was betrayed by friends, family, lied on, given up. Let's read it. First Peter 2 and 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Hamashiach also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did not sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. <clears throat> so Yahweh Shai is now occupying a throne of glory, having been tested through the fiery trial of affliction, suffering, Let's go here and close out. We're going to go to James chapter 5. Let's start at verse 8. James chapter 5, verse 8. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. So the way this truth is set up. The word is being read while prophecies are being fulfilled. So that now is not is now, literally now. <clears throat> Although this was written approximately a couple thousand years ago, the spirit is it's synchronized with the events that are unfolding, prophetic events. So the spirit is backed by prophecy confirming the word the Most High spoke to us. So this is a living, breathing word. But ye also establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. James 5 and 9. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. So Yahweh Shai is our judge. So we are to walk in the example that he set before us. So 
So he's like, okay, I showed you what right looks like. Now it's time to execute what I told you to do and follow the instruction booklet of life. So now we are without excuse because the teacher has showed us how to walk, how to talk, how to live. Suffer the little children unto me. So the children of Israel elect are coming to the Lord in meekness with all subjection unto him. Let's go to James 5 and 10. Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. So putting on the garment of this truth comes with bumps and bruises and stripes, bloodshed, soreness, sorrow, mourning, humility. Yahweh Shai was humiliated. He was slapped and beat, punched, had crowns of thorns smashed into his head. So not one time did he compromise his faith or integrity. Not one time did he become carnal. Not one time did he curse the Most High. Not one time. So following the leader, if you will, which is the author and finisher of our faith, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, affliction, patience, temperance, being long-suffering, as we read, how the Most High image is. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying of praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Kankadash, Barakatham. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala, and the Bible. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.